Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Ford Foundation. Welcome to Beyond Conventions, a day we're going to spend reimagining human rights in a time of change. This is the third in a series of gatherings to mark the Ford Foundation, this institution's 75th anniversary of working with visionary leaders and visionary institutions all over the world. This room is filled with people who every day save lives, change the world, demand a, must, demand a more just society, a more just existence, an extraordinary cross-section of dedicated human rights and civil rights leaders. Sometimes I actually name people in my little talks like this, but there's so many of you here today that it wouldn't do justice to any of you to have me name just a few. I have to say that for me, it's humbling. It's humbling to be here among all of you. It's been a privilege to work with you over the last four years, and it's lovely to see you here. Now, thus far, these 75th anniversary events have been all about the future. We're the next front lines of change are emerging. How we at Ford can support new ideas, new movements for this new century. But today, I'd like just for a second to look back into Ford's illustrious past because human rights have been at the very core of this institution for 75 years. It was in this building, it was in this building in the late 70s that the idea for Helsinki Watch first emerged in a conversation between program officers and rights advocates. In the 90s, the very first dollar that flowed into ICTJ came from the Ford Foundation. And in recent years, our support for rights advocates and civil society organizations in North Africa proved vital investments that helped keep democratic values alive. I'll tell you something. There's been a lot of change in philanthropy over the last few years. But this I can assure you of. The Ford Foundation's support for the human rights movement internationally and the civil rights movement domestically is unwavering. Let me also say, you represent our highest aspirations. We are here for you, and our support for you will only grow. Now, let me just look forward. Let me briefly talk to you about two new things we're investing in. The first is a new generation of human rights organizations, crowd-sourced change, change driven by the immense power of today's technological transformation. A force for change unimaginable just 10 years ago, which is just a simple day-to-day -day part of the lives of the next generation of human rights leaders. The second area of new investment is an effort to strengthen human rights organizations in the global south, bringing new voices into the movement, to bring attention to issues sooner, to deepen the movement, to diversify our voices, to increase our points of pressure. You know, the importance of this work, the power of human rights to improve the human condition, is without question. Who would have thought, who would have thought in the mid-1980s that the military dictatorships in Latin America would be transformed into thriving democracies in just one generation. Or that Eastern Europe would pierce the Iron Curtain and be restored to freedom. Who would have thought just two years ago that across North Africa, political authoritarianism would be on the run under profound challenge? That we can say all these things is a testament to your work. It's a testament to what the rights movement has achieved in the last 50 years. But you know, the rights community, the human rights community has never been one to rest. And today is no different. For all your success, for all our success, we know that the most vulnerable citizens of the world remain one step behind. Indigenous peoples. Afro-descendants, the LGBT community, and in many countries, in too many countries, women and girls. We continue to see persistent oppression, discrimination, and the denial of human dignity, even in countries that are nominally considered to be democratic nations. And we also need to remember, and for those of us who are from the United States, this is central, 
we need to remember that abuses aren't just a thing we find in poor countries or in southern countries. Here in the United States, from the immigration detention camps in the West Texas desert to that island prison just a few miles north of here on Rikers, a population bigger than that of some whole countries is being held in conditions of documented abuse. In this environment, we have to ask ourselves, how is technology changing the practice of human rights? How can we focus more on the poorest and most marginalized communities? How can we hold democratic countries more accountable for their own human rights violations, including our own country? In other words, how are we gearing ourselves toward the achievement of a new generation of real world human impact? That's why we're here. These are the questions we're challenged to address today. So I want to thank you. I want to thank you for braving the weather, braving the traffic, braving the security guards, <laughs> and being part of this conversation this morning, this day. And with that, I want to introduce my friend. She is my friend. The person really behind Beyond Conventions, our Vice President for Democracy, Rights, and Justice, Maya Harris. Okay, good morning. And thank you, Luis, for those inspiring words and for your leadership at this time of great opportunity, not just for Ford, but for the global human rights movement. And thanks to all of you who have joined us from around the world, literally from around the world, to participate in today's convening. You are the frontline advocates, artists, leaders, whose daily work makes real the promise of human rights. And I can't imagine a more esteemed, accomplished, or better equipped group to help us take stock of where we've been these past 75 years and where we're going, especially where we're going. Because as Louise said, this anniversary is not limited to highlighting the past. It's about our shared future. While this foundation and the human rights movement that it has supported has had great success Success that we should acknowledge and we should celebrate. We know that our conversation today must be about the work of tomorrow. Because for the LGBT activist who's building a movement in the face of persecution and death, the young women and girls determined to create a future without child marriage, the protester in the public square risking everything to change the world they know for the one that they aspire to. It's tomorrow that matters. And that's why we conceived Beyond Conventions, an opportunity to look beyond the human rights conventions that have long defined our work and to ask ourselves, what are the next front lines of the movement and what can we do to advance them? So today, we want to learn from all of you to hear what you think are the fault lines of the future and the emerging opportunities that we need to seize. We want to explore questions such as how do we confront the challenge of not just upholding human rights, but making them tangible and real for a new generation of the world's most vulnerable populations? How do we build a movement that's inclusive, diverse, and brings to the table new voices that are not often enough heard? And how, in an age of increasing political rights, do we effectively promote economic and social rights and bring sustainable economic and social benefits to those still left behind? Because as we all know, free and fair elections alone won't fill empty stomachs, educate children, and create a path to economic prosperity. We also hope today's conversations will elevate concerns that already define so much of our philanthropic work but have yet to receive the prominence and attention that they deserve like issues affecting women and girls. The unfinished business, where progress is still lagging. How are we gonna to work together to turn the long-held aspiration of equal rights for women in, at home, at work, and representation in government 
into an actual lived reality. We're going to talk about that with two extraordinary individuals later this morning. And of course, we cannot talk about the next generation of our human rights work without focusing on the exciting new terrain that it's already playing out on. The online world clearly holds great promise for our goals and aspirations, but it's still evolving. How are we going to ensure that it evolves in a direction that protects and advances human rights, as opposed to being used as a tool for repression? So you're going to have an opportunity to ask the inventor of the World Wide Web that very question this afternoon. And one final observation about our goal for today's program. The United States is part of the globe. So as Louise said, let's not forget that we face a host of human rights challenges here at home, from immigration to mass incarceration to education and growing income inequality. Challenges that have become more salient as so many struggle to find work, pay mortgages, and hold on to their homes. Confronting these challenges must be a key element of our future agenda, and we will talk about that over lunch. So with that, I would say that we are ready for an exhilarating day of discussion. And while there will be areas of consensus that I'm sure will emerge, we know in this crowd that not everyone here is going to agree on the path forward. And we would expect nothing less. Those differences of opinion are the opportunities that we all have for reflection and reassessment. So I urge you to please approach the day with the candor and the questions that will ensure that we actually have an open and lively conversation. We are so thrilled that you're here. And thank you for being here. Now, let's begin with our first panel, a look at the human rights movement's past and its future to set the stage for the day. I'd like to welcome the moderator of our first conversation, Jeffrey Robertson, a renowned international lawyer, advocate, author of more than a dozen books, and even occasional television star. I can't imagine a better person to kick off our discussions today than Jeffrey. So please join me in welcoming Jeffrey and his five expert guests to the stage. <laughs> 